how did he get cancer in every part of his body? Tonight, a Call Curtis investigation after the death of a beagle rescued from a shelter. When a Grass Valley woman learned some beagles are used for lab research, she called Curtis. Well, she had no idea this was illegal. We found six research facilities for dogs in our area. And tonight, she wants to know what happens to these animals and how would you know if a pet you adopted was used for research? Yeah, we're trying to take this out there. Let's see if this is working. Rescuing this beagle from the county animal shelter. He was phenomenal on cross country skis. Here's the at the end of my skis. Theodore was Virginia Moran's companion for three years. We went backpacking and camping and kayaking. Then suddenly, he got sick, losing weight, unable to use his back legs. The vet said Theodore had aggressive cancer in every organ in his body. It was so bad they rushed into the room and said, you need to put this dog down like now because the dog's in incredible pain. So she did. As the vet comforted her, something he said stood out. You don't know where he came from. For the first time, she heard beagles are used for research because they're gentle, forgiving, and people-pleasing. She then remembered Theodore's unusual behavior when she adopted him. And I don't think he'd ever been walked before, so we had to go through that process, uh, teaching him how to walk. Was Theodore a research dog? How did he get cancer in every part of his body? The shelter said he was a stray. Lab research on dogs is legal, but heavily regulated. Here in California, federal records show 37 facilities up and down the state perform some sort of research on dogs. The industry says dog research here has led to medical breakthroughs with pacemakers, insulin pumps, and treatments for things like bleeding disorders and respiratory distress in premature babies. On the feds list, we found six facilities in our area, including UC Davis and Kasumnas River College. But Kasumnas takes issue with the feds labeling them as a research facility. We do not do any research here on animals whatsoever. No experimenting, just teaching. They say they rescue dogs from shelters and future vet techs only treat the animal's medical conditions. They are spayed and neutered to get excellent health care while they're here. UC Davis admits it performs biomedical research on dogs. The school wouldn't allow us into its facilities, but says it's accredited by an organization that promotes the humane treatment of animals in science. But PETA paints a different picture of what happens in some labs. Undercover video released in 2008 of a lab out of state shows a drooling beagle force-fed Oxycontin. At another lab, this beagle confined to a steel cage is seen anxiously circling. And what concerns animal rights groups after being experimented on, many dogs are euthanized. If we didn't rescue them, they'd be killed. The state of California passed a law in 2015 requiring taxpayer-funded labs find homes for any adoptable animal used for research. They're seeing the outdoors for the first time. The Beagle Freedom Project rescues beagles from labs. <laughs> This rescue, this summer. Organization President Shannon Keith describes the moment some of these beagles first see freedom. It hurts their eyes to see the sun. They don't know how to walk on grass. Many of them have no muscle tone, so it's hard to even walk at all. But back to Virginia's question. How would you know if the dog you adopted was used for research? This is Rocky. He was rescued from a lab. Shannon shows us how to check. We would just flip his ears over and see, does he have a tattoo? Inside, you could faintly see his identification number. Another giveaway, if your pet's vocal cords were clipped. So if you have a dog who cannot make a sound, that dog is typically from a laboratory. And check to see if the microchip traces back to a lab. Virginia doesn't recall a tattoo in Theodore's ear. Says he did bark, and his microchip only traces back to the shelter, nothing prior. I internalized a lot of that. Unclear of Theodore's past leaves Virginia haunted. I believe that we can still do research, cancer research, without using these innocent animals.
Well, we checked with all the shelters in our area, and some said they would accept research dogs. Some said they would not. Several shelters said if they know an animal is from a lab, they will tell the adopter. We're going to post what each shelter in our area said online, where you could also find statements from the six research facilities in our area. And do we have any idea how many dogs are used in these facilities? According to the federal numbers, uh, it's 2,000 in California, and it is upwards of 60,000 across the country. But researchers point out that the majority of animal testing is actually done on rats and mice. Less than one half of one percent of all animal testing is done on dogs. Hmm. Interesting, though, and disturbing in some ways, too. Mm. Well, if you have a consumer problem you can't resolve, maybe we can call our hotline Monday through Friday, or you could always go to our website, cbs13.com, slash call Curtis, and fill out our form.